Welcome back. We are still talking about concepts of security. And um, today we are going to focus on authentication, authorization, and accounting. And um, we want to make sure that the people we are given access to are legit and they have the right to the access we are given to. So let's start with authentication. Authentication really means that I said that Mr. A has the right to access this application or this system, this server, and that we are actually giving it to Mr. A and Mr. A alone, right? We are not just given a generalized, like we have this um, access is given to this entire department. Even if we assign it to a department, anybody who logs in can be traced, um, access can be traced to one person in the department, each individual in the department. Authentication is uh, the process of verifying and I, the identity of a user system or entity trying to access a network or a system. And one way to do that is by using passwords, biometrics, smart cards, tokens, I'm not sure if people use tokens anymore, but I remember it's like a fob or it's like a, a, a thing that you carry and then it will show a number that you type in. These days there are apps for it. Microsoft um, has uh, the authenticator, Google, there's Google um, authenticator as well. Um, those are the two I know, but I know there are private ones too. And some companies have ingrown um, authentication as well, but um, and and that will be part of multi-factor authentication. It says here two-factor authentication. That's like the barest minimum. I know some very high-profile companies that go not just um, two factors. They go three factors. You put in a um, a security question, and then you put in uh, they send a token, a number to your phone. So th that would be more than two factor right that would be three right now i doubt if companies go four or five that would be daunting <laughs> all right so that is authentication we are making sure that the person that we gave access to is the right person we can trace access to one individual right now we are going to talk about authorization even though they have given me I have authenticated that I am the right person to be in. I have verified that I am the right person to give um, access to an application or um, to have access to a system or a, a server. I still want to make sure that I am authorized to use it, right? They can give me access to a laptop, which most companies will do. But on that laptop, not you're not authorized to do everything on that on that laptop. Um, in fact, some companies already pre-select what apps you can use. So when I give you a laptop based on your role, then you will not get access to certain apps based on your role. If you're working at a hospital and you they give you you have, let's say you are accounts payable. They probably won't give you what the physicians see. The apps that the physicians use to read, um, what do they do? I don't know what physicians, to read maybe test results. You will not get that access to that app. You will not be authorized to use that app. Even if you have access to that app, probably when you click on it, you will not see anything or you will get a big banner saying access denied. Yeah. So that's what authorization is. Authorization is really making sure that even though after verifying that you're the right person to get into our environment, to get into maybe because you're an employee, you have access visibility to some applications, some servers, some even some SharePoint um, folders. But based on once you put in your password, which is the authentication method, the system or the whole entire environment will know that, oh, you put in your name as um, Mr. Smith and then you put in your password. Based on your role, you don't have access to these stuff. You have access to only these stuff. You're not authorized. Just think it of it as a regular English, right? You're not authorized to access these applications based on your role or your privileges. You cannot go 
these are your applications, right? That's what authorization is. Authorization. Now I will read. The reading, the 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 definition on screen is quite self-explanatory. So if my talking made you confused you, please look on the screen and read the definition. Granting or denying access, right, access rights and permissions to authenticated users based on their identity and the resources they are trying to access. Role-based access control is, is one of the things you do. That's what I explained. When I put in that I am, when I log in, they can tell that I am only the cleaner. So all I need is um, um, access to order cleaning supplies. I don't need to see a payroll. I don't need to see how to de um, adjust positions. I don't need to see HR applications. I will not get access to it. So that's what role basis. If I am at the security analyst working at a hospital, if I am a cybersecurity analyst working at a, a hospital, I don't need to see what the physicians see. And 90% of the time, I don't need to see patient information. Now, sometimes when there's a breach or there is someone tempest with the system, I may see patient information, but I'm not authorized to use it. I'm not authorized to do anything with it. I'm only seeing it based on my role. Maybe I need to block access. I need to deny. I need to segregate, segment, or remove maybe uh, uh, an app from our environment just to contain the breach or whatever is happening. And I may see some information, but usually when it's your role, when it's not in your role to use or see certain things, um, companies try to block it because it helps, right? Um, if you are a cleaner, I'm not reducing cleaners. If you're a cleaner, chances are you may not be even tech enough to have two-factor authentication, these biometrics. You probably have a simple password or a regular standard password that just gets you into it. You probably won't log out when you're cleaning. So maybe not much care will be given. If let's say you are a nurse, um, very busy. You may not even have the time to go back. And so maybe it won't be an ideal situation to show it the entire company's um, uh, uh, employee status, employee information. They don't need access to it. If they are attacked, th th that's given freely given information to the threat actors. Sometimes they even only use it because they have it. They, they are probably thinking, wow, this was easy. Let me use it to show them. So this is just a way to say that, okay, once this group of people are attacked, at least we know that they don't have information. If the financial team, anybody in the financial team is attacked, we can be sure that they will get only this amount of information. This is what we need to secure. This is what we need to quickly contain or quickly cut from the rest of the um, network, right? So role base is a very, very crucial thing. If done right, it can help re remove, eliminate a lot of headaches. So that is, um, and then it's the same way of permission associated with users, user roles is the same as role base. You're given permission, you're given access to people based on their roles. You're giving them permission. You know, at the hospital, like, there are certain places when you go in, even though you have shown your badge, you have authenticated at the door with by scanning your badge, there are also some rooms that you are not able to enter. When I go into, say, I see you, I would have to authenticate again. And they will probably ask me why I'm going there because I'm not a nurse, I'm not a physician. I would have to have a very good reason for them to take me through certain doors. Certain doors are locked for just patients and their doctors and nurses and their caretakers. And so that's role based. That's authorization, making sure that the people who have access, even though they have authenticated and said that they belong to the company or they belong to um, the, the laptop you've given them is theirs. Not everything is given them. I hope that makes sense. Now that we have talked about authentication and um, authorization, let's talk about accounting. We have authenticated that, yes, Mrs. Smith is has the right to have our laptop or has the right to 
come into the hospital or a bank or if you work at a retail, they have the access to work with us. But and then we have said that they are authorized to go to this department, that department as as, as have access to um, this application, this server, this um, door, enter this room. But now we're going to hold them accountable to everything that they are doing. And this is when logs come in, audit logs. So if anything happens and we need to prove that Mrs. Smith wasn't the one who did it, we can go and look at the audit logs. And sometimes they have been hacked and you can trace sometimes, not all the time, these hackers are really wild. So sometimes you can trace and say that, okay, the IP address, of course, they can mask it, I know, but it helps to know that Mrs. Smith was asleep at this time, or Mrs. Smith was in this area at this time. Sometimes reviewing the audit logs can help, not only to look for bad things. Sometimes something is really working, right? And we want to go back and see what we did. Maybe there's a security policy that was set in our network that we need to apply to all the others, right? Because we realize it's working. We can look at the audit logs and say that, we can look at the audit logs and say that, um, um, this is the security policy that um, this department has. It's working for them. Let's apply it to the entire company organization, right? So these are some of the things. It's not audit logs. It's not just to find bad, bad things. It's great to find bad things, but it's not only for finding bad things. We want to hold everybody accountable. If someone says, I sent an email, we can go back into um, even the back end and see that, yes, they sent it. And if you didn't receive it, maybe we should look into it. It could be that there's a glitch. It could be that there's a situation that needs fixing. So audit logs, also known as auditing and accountability, involves tracking and logging user activities and system events. It helps in monitoring, analyzing, and creating an audit trail of actions taken within a network or system. And like I said, one very way of doing accounting or getting accountability is logging and auditing. And when KPMG or any external auditors come and they say that, hey, we want to prove that this and this are happening. We want to prove that there's a multi-factor authent authentication going on in your system. Or we want to prove that you guys have um, external storage. Then you will be able to go back. We want to make sure that, sorry, my daughter came in. We want to make sure that if something happens, we can go back into the system and trace what happened. Just like if you lose something, just like um, the, the investigators, the detectives, they say they usually go back. OK, where did you go? They walk, they retrace the steps to see is the same that we do. Even when you go into um, a bank, you sign in. They can say, in case of an event, they can say, okay, these are the people who signed in. Of course, it's just one measure to figure out what happened. Usually, threat actors probably won't even sign in. That's why there are multiple ways of logging and keeping audits. Hi, guys. So I was talking too much. I cut the video short, but see you in the next video. Happy learning.